Hi guys, we have Simon He who came first at the Utrecht Remote Joe YCS. Uh, so he was playing 10 Ye Sword Soul and he's uh, going to show us the deck profile and have a wee discussion with us about it. Are you good to get going? Yeah, that's good. Most of it is fairly standard, so I don't think most of it needs much explaining. And I'll explain some of the ratio differences that I had um, in the deck. So the Sword Soul package is... No, where's the other one? Free emergence. Yeah, I was about to have a question there. <laughs> uh, two Taie, three Moye, three Long. These are all absolutely mandatory. There's nothing to change about any of this. And uh, free Ecclesia. Um, yeah, this is extremely standard. Why not the third Taie? Oh, I'm, that. Um, I think that needed more explanation at the beginning of the format, but right now it's just like it, literally if if you go first with this card, it it's not you have to make some really weird plays to get its effect off. So unless you have this, of course, but then you're still trying because it's your turn one, you're, and you don't really need to backseer them for two. You still try most of the time to go backseer, uh, tire dump this. It's just a longer way to to Moye. And yep. then draw one, and it can it can brick going first, with like, Adhara and, um, Droplet and things like that. Um, this is reversed. Oh, and the um, obligatory blackout. I, some people play two, but I prefer one because uh, going second is not as great, especially like against the slow matchups. I guess, uh, going second with it is okay, but um, against like. Combo decks going second with it. It's just, it is, it's like the, the advantages of having two and playing those really cool tricks with it when you're going first. Um, being able to like do like tokens and setting it, and th there's some cool tricks with like Chi Xiao and uh, Tai and Long and stuff like that. But it, it's not, it doesn't outweigh the fact that just um, having two of it going second is just not good at all. So that's it for the Soul Soul package. For the Tenji package, three Asana, one Shatana, two Adhara, and three Visuda. So, <clears throat> oh, and three Vessel. So, some people don't play this, but I still really like it. At least in game one. I, I tend to side it out quite a lot. Um, because the, the, there's actually one problem with this deck is that there's not that much stuff you want to side out, but without messing with the flow of the deck, but there's quite a lot of stuff you want to side in. Um, but going uh, in game one, this is quite good if uh, you can make some... Uh, like it, It's not like super optimal, but sometimes you, you get stopped going first, and sometimes you just have to ask them for this, and then uh, use this and like uh, a tuner and go into something. Um, I prefer one of this and two Adhara instead of just three Adhara. It just gives, gives a little bit of versatility. And um, going second with it, it's pretty good to clear the Chi Shell, the lone Chi Shell and um, Blackout um, by going into Battle Phase and just ramming it, getting rid of the only worm. And you can do the same with like uh, things like Dogmatica, Ecclesia. If they have a Fleur in hand, you get rid of it, the, the Ecclesia first, so they can't... They, they lose an interruption with Fleur. And sometimes having three of those, you, you, you just break. Like, some, it's okay having this, like, in, in the opening hand, um, to make... If you're going second, to make with... Uh, to special summon it, and then make with Long, and then go into... Uh, go into Yahtzee. But still, uh, overall, I think two is fine. And no dragon circle. Do you? Do you oh, no, no, the no, dodge no, no, in the no. imperms or what? No. Um, I did play dragon circle like last week. I, I've always, I've never. I didn't realize it until until the second place. Uh, what what a jewel? I think his name is. Um, he mentioned it, and yeah, like it, it's always been in the in the back of my mind that like circle isn't actually that good. Like every time I open a hand with just like tie circle. Droplet and then two hand traps or like combinations of like something like that where it just doesn't go anywhere or maybe just like a, a tenyi tie um circle like hand trap something something like that um 
you have to make some really weird plays just to go into you have to use like the tenyi and then circle to go into um to go into long or, or moye to even have a play and it's like too much to uh to risk um to have just an, a mediocre play and um like i feel like when i was testing in the back of my mind it i knew that was the case but the public perception of that card, everyone was hyping it. People played like two to three. Um, like, if you if you've tested the, the the deck extensively, it bricks, and it's not even that good going first. Like dodging in perm and Vela, it's it doesn't net you the plus one because you got rid of the, your Moye most likely. It, at most, it just ends up with uh, you end up with like a Chishao and a Baron, but you don't get to draw, which is like a weak play anyway. So. Um, I didn't like it. I preferred 100%. Like, Vessel was always... I was always playing 2 Vessel, but, like, 3 Vessel does actually make a lot of a lot of sense. Because any of these... Any of Vessel and a, a Tenyi is basically the same as Asuna and a combination of Asuna and uh, Adhara or Visuda. So, uh, you make um, a Synchro before you even commit to a normal summon or long run. And you get to out some of their interruptions. Um, you get to... I would go to Shishiao to get like uh, search for a piece that you're missing, um, and like you, you already get rid of a shooter. So if it's just turn one, you have add her to add it back, add something back, like most likely Asuna, or if it's your turn two, like you you might have backseer them for two. May, may, probably they interrupted it, like because they're not they're not gonna if they have like Vela or Imperm, they're not gonna allow backseer to spin two. So you got rid of the uh, interruption that way, and then Vasuda will like spin away potentially another interruption and then you've not even you did that with like two interruptions and you've not even started like uh with um your normal summon and long run so the one major issue that i never actually played with free before was because there's only once per turn and of course this, this deck plays the other once per turn cards like um spells like these um but this is Potentially good, sometimes even good in turn one if they have token collector or something like that. Like, um, this is good in your turn one anyway, and it will be good like later on as well. And this is like, even if you've already banished turn, this is potentially good later on as well. But this is like pretty bad later on. Once you've resolved one, you don't really need more 10 years. Yes, you can make some cool plays by dumping like Protos and Long Yuan and then like. Banishing it with some way like t with tire and then like adding it back with Adharo. Um it doesn't really happen that often. So but you need to open this. Like uh like this sort this play solves so many issues and so many matchups and um it deals with like there can only be one like dumping the shooter, uh it deals with like Winder sometimes. Um the only issue I had with it was that it's once per turn and it's not good later on, like mid game and end game. So, but that's not much of an, like, in one matchup, um, I think I drew, like, two from Desires after already having one. But I just got rid of the actual ones with, from Drop. Like, it, that's the next thing about this deck. Like, I don't understand why people don't play this card. Like, it, it's it's good against the other tier one, probably, or the best deck in the meta, which is Bird. Try to get Lyralisk. And also, it has a lot of applications just dumping rid of dead cards. This deck has lots of extra resources that you don't necessarily need. And sometimes, like, having it in Graveyard is okay too. So you can just send any one of these as well. And you can still use them later on. You can get the dead cards like these, this. Um, there's been some times, that it's not even about just stopping combo decks. There's, there's been some times where against Sky Striker, like, usually it's not that good against that deck, but because people put side deck token collector now, I have to keep these in. Like, it, like and they play DPE as well. But sometimes, even if it's not that, like, in, in the grand game, like, if you long run them for 12, and then you attack them with two synchro monsters, they're down to, like, 2,000 or less, right? So, in, like, the mid to, uh, mid game, grand game to end game, if you just have, like, any synchro monster and this, like, after they take that, like, it can it can just game them unexpectedly because they're, they're not expecting them to like die like i, I did that through sky striker um they won like 2000 or something like that and i think i have tapped with chishao and then um chishao negated uh kagari's gain and then like damaged that droplet and then put him down to like 750 and then they take 
2000 and it's, it's just game. Like the, it, that's obviously not the main reason you play these, but I pre much prefer this over Chalice because Chalice um, you can't target the untargetable Tri Brigade. The Relisk cards, like there's some Morgue and stuff underneath it. Um, it doesn't get rid of useless cards and like just make use of like some useless cards in your hand. And also, um, actually no, that's it. But like Chalice, the only advantage to Chalice is if it's specifically just for Token Collector, just that one thing, then yes, it is better than this because you don't have to, there's no cost to it. And also with the, uh, with Alistair, you can make it over a thousand so they can't make Armourage. But, um... Overall, this is just more versatile, and I think it's just better. I, the builds that don't play in Source or Tenyi, I just don't understand, to be honest. Um, especially right now, because everyone's playing token collect side in Token Collector, so you you don't really want to side this card, so you just keep it in the main, pretty much. Um, yeah, that is... And Desires, there's no explanation needed here for this. What next? Oh, High Drops. Um, free impermanence, free ash, and one failure. Okay, this is like if you're watching this, your first reaction might be, "Why just one?" Like ratio doesn't seem that good. I did do two two before, um, but I did, decided against it. First of all, ash is just generically good against, well, not bad against, at least okay against every single matchup. Sometimes you you ash them on their ecclesia or on desires, and they can just end. Um, it's not really gr great against any matchup, but it's got a wide coverage. Whereas, since I already played Imperm, which is um, just better Valor, um, I didn't want that many things that did almost the same thing. So, like, the these seven, they all, like, negate monster effects, and um, these four targets as well. I didn't want any more than the four that targets and I didn't want like even more that just negates effects. I wanted like a variety of hand traps that do different things for different scenarios. You don't want to be stuck with like too many of these against like Sky Striker or something like that. Like you only really want it against Verte. Um and yeah like I still but I still couldn't just go with just six hand traps. I needed like one more like um so that's why I went with one Valor. And also, I, I genuinely, after, I did test two and two, but I generally preferred like three Ash most of the time. And um, sometimes you, you just normal summon this and you synchro with the Moye or Taie to go into Yahtzee, or you just have this and like a lone uh, Bishuda or Asuna in hand and you can make Chenying or Barone. So yeah. This goes here, this goes here, and the last two cards is the Protos, obligatory, just this card. Uh, I'm not sure if it needs to be banned, but I think like maybe Emergence needs to get restricted, so you can't go into this as easily. Like, um, oh, that's the only other thing, that's the one thing I preferred about Circle. Like, you can go into this, like, you don't have to use the Emergence to go into Go into this if you really need it. You can emergence for long if you don't have a long, and then go into this with emerge uh, with circle. But still, it wasn't enough to um, to outweigh the uh, the downsides of circle, and just played more vessel as well. And uh, in third order, um, I kept it as close to forty. I'm, I'm playing at forty two, so that I you know this card. I I don't see the point of side decking it um, because. Like, you only then, at most, have one game going first. Whereas if you main deck it, you have, like, made potentially two games going first. Um, and I think th this card is just so... It's only a one-off, but, like, it, you have draws in the deck, like Desires, you have Moye. And it's just so strong against every matchup going first. Like, it, th this card just becomes clutch. Um, like, they, they could get past the Chi Shell Baron easily, but if you, if you have this to back it up, it's just... Yeah, so it, it's just one of those just win cards. Side deck. Uh, we'll do that last, actually. Just last. Right, okay. Some of these, I feel like, are pretty obligatory after the format. It's more defined now. Um, for this particular deck, it's free draws. Works for Invoked. Works for Tribrigade Liberalist. Works for um, Drytron. So there's a lot of coverage. This is... Probably the best hand trap for Sortal in the meta right now. 
Um, one of the major issues about other hand traps like Nibiru, which I very, very much dislike about uh, with Nibiru, because like um, it doesn't normally crush their turn. You need like Nibiru and Impermanence um, to really crush their turn. And um, it's not that great against um, the mirror match because if they play around it, if they have the ability to play around it, they can and with like Barone. But and also if they um, play optimally, they're more likely, if they have the resources to, to save the Asuna, and then if you Nibiru them, and then they, they have another Tenyi, because they get the token, they could uh, special summon the Tenyi, remove uh, uh, Banish Asuna's effect, special summon the other Tenyi, and just go into another Synchro. Like, it's... Just giving them that token in the mirror match is just not... It's not really advised. Um, so... Like with Gamma, it's um, it doesn't. Oh, with Nibiru as well. Like it stays on a field, which messes with the whole Tenyu package and uh, potentially messes with the Ecclesia special summon. I, you just don't want that monster there. Um, but with this, obviously, it banishes itself. Um, it's just very high impact against like the entirety of the meta going second. And sometimes that there are odd occasions where um, you don't get to use it in their turn. Or you might top deck it in your turn, but like you have so many cards for them to ash um, or interrupt with, and like Ecclesia clears itself on cost. There's uh, Part of Desires. There's Emergence. So, like if you if you if you activate this as in your turn, and you get this, then this makes like the ten year second effect live because it's a non effect monster, and you can do some really cool things. You can like make um, just just with this and an Asuna, you can make like. Uh, Chao Chao Feng with uh, with uh, Darks not being able to activate. If you go like Adhara with this into Yahtzee and then this into Chao Feng, if that if that option is really good for you, or you can just make Yahtzee and then pop pop something special some Mario and then just go on. Like because it's Tuna and it's like level six and level two, there's lots of like versatility in what you can do if you use it in your turn. Um, so yeah, I, I really I think this is like the best hand trap for the deck. Um, so free cosmic and yeah that you need to deal with some of the trap decks and um so you you should at least have free side deck space to deal with um the trap decks and just people decks that play things like they can only be one um yeah it's pretty mandatory in here i think free slots why are you playing cosmic over the twins is it for things like scythe um, yeah, it is for things like Scythe, uh, what else is there, there's, against, um, uh, what do you call it, Sky Striker, you do want to banish them more, and they do tend to not set as much, because it's game 2 and 3, especially if you let them go first or something like that, and also, they're setting Chain Balls anyway, but that doesn't necessarily matter, um, Banishing like the area zero is really good, and also if if I have like droplet keeping it in because of token collector and twin twister, that that's a, a little bit too much of a discard cost as well. Um, yeah, so I think I think cosmic is just generally better. So last event uh, the week ago, I didn't play this, but um, I, I did consider playing this. But like the previous events running up to last week's event, sword sword didn't hit the. Um, the top cut as much as I expected it to. So going into last week's event, I wasn't expecting Sword Sword to be as popular. Um, so I didn't want to waste three side deck space and two extra deck space for this because it, it's honestly like it's too much. Um, you only really have two spare extra deck space as well. Um, but after last week, Sword Sword was like very prevalent in the top 32, so I thought it's worth it this time. And this is another reason for uh, Droplet to be kind of mandatory as well, I think, in the main deck, because um, not just to counter against it, um, but to um, but to uh, da -da -da -da, get rid of your own collector. Like, the, the, the ways when you get rid of your own collector are you either exceed with it with a level 4, you summon Ecclesia and you synchro with it, or you... Um, I, did this, I, did, I did this against the mirror match, like... I had such a good hand, he just ended on Moye after this um, pop the token, right? That I had like a really good hand of Tenyi's Vessel, um, Moye, Long, and then I had a um, Fumin Droplet as well. And I was thinking, like, I can just summon and go into an Exceed, um, but then I, I can't really, like, 
play really like go all out and I felt like if I went all out and he hand trapped me anyway like he'd have to have some very specific and uh, quite a lot of them hand traps to, um, to stop all of my plays then um, it's okay because I have collected in graveyard uh, to stop his plays next turn right um, so I fibbed and droplet got rid of this just to almost mean, mean, meaninglessly get rid of uh, to, to negate and half the moyo just so that I can go ten ye vessel and then do just like all the combo plays um yep yeah, that, that's the the other reason why you kind of have to have droplet as well like in, in a mirror match if you droplet this and just leave it there and um if you don't have like a like a game board a game push or you um don't have like uh you don't have the hand to like make a really big board you just if it's just like she shell baron you just leave this there and then you know they can't um they, they can't it's going to be restricting them next turn and you just have to stop them from like making zeus on you basically um and two dimensional barrier this could have been something different I, I didn't really like this at two i much prefer it at three but like i said if i'm gonna play these it has to be i i can't cut this to two it's just um there's not enough uh, trap removal um against like invoked and sky striker and maybe even elderly sometimes that deck is quite annoying like trap decks in general can be quite an annoying for combo decks if they open like the right amount of traps and stuff obviously you can't cut something like this or this as well there's no point, you know, having two of this. Um, two of this, if you're going first with it, and like I said, you have Desires, you have uh, Mo Ye, so it, it's okay um, having two. And this card is just so versatile against so many matchups, like Invoked, The Mirror, um, Tribrigade Luralisk, and um, maybe even like Virtual World, Sword Soul, um, Drytron. So it's just, I thought it was quite necessary to be in here. But uh, this is like the optional spot, these two, I think. So this could be Nibiru, but like I mentioned, I really dislike Nibiru. Um, I think it's only for really, really heavy combo decks, and I, I just don't like how it just messes with the flow of the deck. Um, it could, if it's at the beginning of the format, when the format's not defined, it could be like Reboot or harpies or something like that but for now because the format's more defined i prefer this what about dark ruler it's like it's droplet basically yeah. it's like droplet or dark ruler and um, you know with, with drop with, with uh droplet you could otk them through droplet with dark ruler i mean it, it, if you unless it, you close the timeout um unless you uh just don't end on like a big board and don't clear this stuff then like, if you do, then Dark Ruler doesn't... The difference between Dark Ruler and Droplet doesn't really matter that much because you're, you're probably still going to win with Dark Ruler. But I don't want to. I don't want Droplet and Dark Ruler. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the side deck. And the extra deck, again, a lot of it is very, very um, mandatory. So uh, the ratios are pretty much well-defined based on lots of people testing and just um, the deck is, like, more defined now towards the end of the format based on... The rest of the meta uh one berserker really good against like um it's i don't think enough people bring this out sometimes like sometimes i choose not to depends on like mid game end game i, I choose not to bring out chisha and bring out this instead it depends on like the match i'm up against really good against tribe brigade lower risk like swallow canary um keras and yeah like against sky striker sometimes like you remove ray um yeah yahtzee barone Chafeng, Tsubaxia, oh no, that's a Ch that's a Chishou, Tsubaxia, nope, that's, there we go, two Chishou and one Chang. Yeah, these are all, like, this specific ratio is, like, in my opinion, mandatory. Um, then we have Shaman and three Monks. Um, I don't think anyone's playing two anymore. I, I, they, they shouldn't be. People at the beginning of format were playing two. But now, because just how versatile and just how powerful the ten years are with Vessel, um, you need more of these because you're, you're just making this at least one of this a turn if you if you can. So it, it needs to be at three. 
and Zeus for the XYZ package with getting rid of um, Token Collector and Light Dragon at Ignista. So this might seem a bit weird but because it is rather mediocre. Um, but the options for rank 4, like, the it needs to be something that gets rid of Token Collector to, to detach. It needs to be something that um, that is, like, semi-powerful so that, you know, in a mirror, 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 mirror match it can run over Tai and Moye. And it just needs to have some sort of additional effect to be okay. But the, the main point of this is just to go into Zeus and go into um, get rid of Token Collector. So the effect is basically um, you you activate it and it's a non-targeting destruction. Um, you destroy things equal to the amount of existence monsters you control. So it's just like an extra thing to get rid of. Um, it's like an extra plus whilst you're getting rid of uh, your token collector. And if they if they somehow stop this attack as well, you don't make use then that extra little advantage can be useful. I didn't want to play Granite. Like the, I could go on a rant for quite a long time, but um, probably don't have time for that. I don't want to play Gallant Granite, um, which searches, you did, you detach that and you search a rock monster and add it to your, from your main deck to your hand and people add Nibiru, but I, as mentioned before, I don't want to waste a space in the side deck for Nibiru. I think Nibiru is very, very average. It messes with the flow of the deck and um, against the mirror, it's not that good if the player plays correctly. And um, just like the theory, in theory, it seems really good, but in practice, um, when do you actually add Nibiru and it becomes impactful? Because you're not making a rank four in your turn one. Like you're, you're doing the Moe plays, right? So if you're not doing that in your turn one, then you're maybe adding it when you have to in your like turn two. But Nibiru is only really impactful when it's a surprise, when it's unpredictable. Like the, the fear of Nibiru is like more effective than actually having Nibiru sometimes. Because having Nibiru, again, it messes with the flow. Like um, sometimes the fear of Nibiru of potentially me having it just stops them. Like they play around something that's not even there. Um, but... In turn two, if you're if you're adding it in turn two, in your turn two, oh no, in your turn one, but like after their turn one, then it's m less likely after turn one that they're gonna summon five or more because they have less resources. So you you get into more of a grind sort of thing after like each other person's turn one. So Nibiru, is like especially a no Nibiru, it's just not gonna. It's it's more like a deterrent if they even can summon five or more. Um, so I think that card it just it's just. Like, you might as well discard it from Droplet or something. Um, so I wanted something that does anything. That's what this card is for. But because I think, like, adding Nibiru is just not good. Like, in the, in the mirror match, if you're if this is specifically about Token Collector, so you're, um, you Token Collector them in their turn one, and then you make uh, Gallant, um, Gallant Granite, and you add Nibiru, like, how are they getting to five summons with, with like, with like them having less resources, so they're uh, then the turn one they, they wasted the Moye, so they, they potentially draw back into five. Um, but then you have the token collector as well, and they know about the Nibiru. It's just I, I don't think it's it will ever come up where you actually blow them out with Nibiru. I think it at most it acts as a deterrent. Well, it's not great, but the other rank fours aren't great either. What about some like Tornado Dragon? You can still make it after Ashina. Since it's a worm. Uh, yeah, I did consider that as well. Um, um, you know what? Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, like it, it, it was like when I was searching through the catalog, the card catalog, it was, it was like I saw that option there. Um, but it's also it still comes up less. But I guess like because you you're getting you're getting rid of um the monsters anyway was used, so you might as well get rid of the spells, which would be interruption, so you, you can attack successfully through it, through something, and then makes use, and then and then get rid of the rest of the field, maybe this turn or next turn. Yeah, so, like, ha, uh, it's 2-4 attack, right? Tornado two, Dragon. 2-1 two off the top. 2-1? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it, is, it is definitely possible, like, 
I think it being a worm doesn't play it into it that much because you're. It's not very likely that you're gonna do the ten year stuff first and then make a rank four, because like you're you're definitely making the synchros. Yeah. But yeah. So like the only reason why you have two level fours, after using Asuna and making a rank four. It, it's super rare. Like you, you, they'd have to stop your Moye, and then you'd somehow have to have another. Like they'd have to have so many monsters, and then you you special summon the ten years, and then you special summon Ecclesia. And they like they stop the tie, and then they stop the mo year as well, and then you go into it. Like it's the, very, the sort very of rare. situation I was thinking is maybe like Ashna effect from hand make monk normal time and mo ye mo ye get stopped. You could then Ashna for like the Shathana, and then uh, make yeah. tornado. Actually, yeah, yeah, that is a pretty good point. Um, that can happen. Although uh, I did mention that most of the time I side out Shatana. Like the, yeah. the the main problem is with this deck. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many cards like, like to side out. Um, I made like a full list of cards to side in and side out against every matchup going first and second. And um, like the Shitana is just the top of cards to side out every single time. Um, like uh, so, Shitana doesn't really end up in the deck uh, post side. Um, but yeah, like it 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 does have merits. Like um, I think because you're just just the argument that you're destroying the back row first, so you, you, you get rid of any interruption that may stop like an attack going through with the XYZ is Yeah, it, it's uh it's pretty good. It's pretty good that uh, one of those two like it, it's marginal that it becomes clutch. Like the, the whatever rank four you go, you're just trying to go into this, basically. Yeah. Um but like I didn't uh, again, granted, I didn't want to waste a side X space, it's just yeah. And that is the deck. I mentioned that I was expecting a lot more um, Sorcerer matchups because uh, because of the success of the previous event last week, Sorcerers. But I actually faced around the same um, same amount of Sorcerers as last week, which was I think three, definitely two, maybe three um, this weekend. And so yeah, they, they, it didn't really this didn't really come into play all that much. And Token Collector came into play like once for me anyway. Um, I don't, I don't know what happened. Like it, it was just like um, there was lots of really weird matchups. I had three sky strikers. I had one um, machina, one dragons in the top sixteen that played summon limit. Um, Dragon link with summon limit. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's uh, you, you can do some things like with rocket pop summon limit stuff, but I, I still don't really like yeah. it. Um, what were matchups? I think I think I played like four birds. Like if I knew I was playing that many birds, then maybe Nibiru in the side deck makes more sense uh, instead of like token collector and stuff like that. But like because because the only thing about Nibiru I like is like against bird you have to hand trap them so much just so that if if they do have the harpy's trap, which is basically an FTK, like just like, like a first turn kill pretty much. Um, then what you want to do is like hand trap them so much so that they only have like weak monsters left and they don't really have a play next turn unless they're top deck really good and they have that trap uh, they play the trap to potentially stop your turn but you just summon something like ecclesia or moye or something like that maybe you already have it because uh summoned it because you they you try to activate and they negate it and you just run over their monster and then you play like a grind game and that, that that's how you hope to like beat bird if they have the trap so nibiru there is decent um so you think going forward with Brave Token coming out, that Token Collector would be the main thing you would be having to say rather than the Nibiru? I haven't looked at Brave at all. <laughs> I, I don't really... Uh, like, uh, technically, I should be looking forward in the OCG and seeing what comes next and like prepare beforehand, but because of like just adult things, there's not as much time to do all yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, when it comes out, like just before it comes out, I'll read up all of it and I'll... It's out it. on Thursday. It's out on Thursday. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a holiday then, so I'll do it afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but like, I, I'm, I'm guessing they, they summon a lot of tokens and then they do a lot no, of stuff. They summon a token and it's all, they have additional effects if they have the token. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, like, if, if it becomes like a super tier one deck, which I, from whispers all over the community, I guess it is, 
then yeah, Token Collector will be quite prevalent. But then they always, like, people think Token Collector kills this deck, and in some way it does, but you can play around it or just negate it with drop, Droplet. Like, Vessel and all the Tenyes, you know, mitigate the losing to um, Token Collector by a large margin. That's another reason why Vessel has to be played at three. Um, yeah, like, the, the problem with saying something's going to be really, really good and then, like, a counter card's going to be really, really good just because of the OCG, it, it doesn't always end up being like that. Like, you can draw some things from the OCG, but the, they have slightly different rules as well as a different ban list. And sometimes people just hype cards where, in theory, they're really good, but in practice, they're not. Like, it because because of the out. card pills, yeah. It, yeah, Designated Cross Out is one of those cards. Like, like everyone hyped that card, and it, it just turned out to be not very good. Like, if the format was um, like a two deck format, then Designated Cross Out would be pretty good. But the format is like, there's so many that like invoke the Sky Striker, and they all actually still do well. Like, um, there's PK sometimes um, can still do well when they're not getting Protoss. Um, there's like. Virtual world sometimes there's um, prank kids that they're pretty good. Like there's there's so much that doesn't need to cross out. Just becomes like a weaker core by the grave against them. Whereas if the format's more defined and you have like one or two decks, then you can hit the main engine cards as well. So that's when that card will probably likely become good when the format's like a bit more defined um, towards the end of the format and when um, when there's like only one or two like. Decks are the better. Yeah. Alright, have you got anything else to say about the event or the, the deck? No, I'm just um, I mean the deck I, I wouldn't change that much. Maybe maybe this card. Like it, it, it the, honestly the late dragon, yeah. Yeah, it honestly depends on like what decks I come up against and it that's all just um best guess but based on like the format and um I think the side deck is uh like pretty good. Like I may even not play Shitana. Um Drop it to forty one, but the actual worm and the actual ten year for vessel, like it, it does come up. It, it does help quite a lot. And um, having something easy to side out is usually pretty. good. Yeah, th this deck is so hard to side out. It's <laughs> unreal. Like, so you, you think if you're thinking, let's say you're f siding against the mirror match, right? You want these going second. You want this. So it's gamma driver. Yeah, that's seven cards, right? Token collector. Like, what can you side out? This this goes out because you're going first. Uh, you're going second. I O. Yeah. This goes out because you're going second. Um, like you, Vader's too good in a mirror match, so I can't side out that. Like, what what else do you side out? Honestly, what else do you, you might be able to? Like, Vishuda can drop to two, but going second, Vishuda is pretty good. Like, if you're going first, Vishuda can be dropped to two, but going second is too good. Like Shatana. Okay, that's what three cards. <laughs> what else do you side out? Like people, they play. If you're going second, they might have a board and they might have token collector. You you have to keep this in. Like, Vessel is just so strong going second. But I actually do still end up siding out one sometimes. Um, Ecclesia, you can't side out. Long, you can't side out. Moya, you can't side out. Tai, you can't side out. Mergent, you can't side out. This is too good in the mirror. So I ended up siding these out. Because like you think, like, um, in game one, like, this is very good. Like, uh against like every deck in the matchup like hitting ecclesia's effect hitting desires in the mirror match it's really really good and you can normal summon this with like um Vishuda or uh Ashuna and just make a single turn but like in game two and three this is just way stronger than this so like with no other cards that you want to and if you it, this if you have this and failure and that, that, might, that might be too many hand traps so you just don't have like other engine stuff, um, like support engine stuff. Um, yeah, so it's really difficult. So this always gets sided out anyway. So it's like the, yeah. Alright, uh, if you got any shout outs before we finish? Um, to Raid and Trade, which is the the company that ran the remote duels in the ones the remote duels in um, Europe. They organized it really well. It ran super smooth. Um, like YCS day one finished at 7 p.m., which is unheard of for like a YCS day one. They usually finish like 11, 12, 10, somewhere around that. And um, you for lending me all the cards because I don't have any of this. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. <laughs>
I just anyone. I think all of them are mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, just anyone has like helped me with testing, with theory, and yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're that very was welcome. very insightful. And uh, yeah, we'll be rooting for you to the next one. Thank you very much. Not a zombie channel.